That's Paranoid Android from the new Radiohead album, the third Radiohead album, in fact, which is called OK Computer, and uh, with me today, uh, the lads from Radiohead, Phil Selway, Tom York, Ed O'Brien, and Johnny and Colin Greenwood. And before we um, go through this new album, I suppose we should go back and just quickly plot the rise of the last album, The Bends, because uh, this was a record which just grew and grew in stature, really, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, it came out and everyone went, oh, oh that's very good, yeah. But then about uh, eight months later, you know, people coming up to you in the street and tapping you in the shelves and saying, oh, that record uh, did this and this to me, got me through something or other. So, um, I don't know, don't know how that happened. It must have happened in people's houses. They yeah. must have played it to each other mm. or something. Um, but that's, that's, because I suppose we were away for most of it in limbo land. And then when we came back down, it was, um, it had done all these weird things. I mean, do you think it stood out more because it wasn't a typically British album at the time? The sort of, the, the records which were being made in the sort of Britpop era, the, the, the bends didn't follow any particular sort of line of, you know, the plot at the time in music in general. I yeah, I suppose I suppose it didn't. Um, it wasn't a, any in any way a conscious decision. I think that the Britpop thing was. Um, I can't remember I could, who was who was it. It was a couple of bands, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. So yeah, but it wasn't was like, that many bands, but yeah. it became a big genre in yeah. a way. If you took people like Blur and Oasis and I suppose oh, Sleeper right, yeah, and Elastica yeah, yeah, and yeah, things yeah. like that. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. When it was around, I kind of felt like we were right in the middle of it actually sort of it felt like we were part of it yeah but the record wasn't that's the yeah. Same thing. Mm. yeah yeah i mean yeah you what you were saying it's kind of the most intelligent phrasing of the Britpop question that we've heard for quite some time i mean we just come back to do some more interviews and it was the same old questions uh, about you know all these <coughs> groups uh, lumped together as Britpop. Mm. it just meant absolutely nothing to us um and and we did a lot of questions asked around Europe and stuff when the bands came out about the same kind of thing about you know so so what do you think of Britpop and it just you know as you say I mean we're part of it but it just doesn't really I think that one of the things about the bands was that it was an ambitious record which people needed a bit of time to mm. maybe understand or well, we did so. <laughs> <laughs> you know we, we were with everybody else on that really I think um, it only sort of happened in retrospect mm. I mean, I think when we actually physically put the record together after working on it for however long it was, we were surprised that it worked. Mm. You know, it was one of those. It had just been such a sort of sprawling ordeal. And the weird thing is we have the same thing with this record, actually. It's mm. sort of, we finish it and it's like, we're still waiting <coughs> for the dust to settle. So mm. we don't know any more than anybody else, which is a really old situation to be in. And we're having the same criticisms levelled at us in <coughs> terms of like, you know, people still say, like the Benz, they said, where are the singles? And they've said that on OK Computer. And now people are saying, well, there were singles on the Benz, where are the singles on this one? People have, you know, they tend to forget that we had exactly the same, I mean, probably High and Dry was the, the most catchy track on that, but the other ones, all the other songs needed to be listened to like four or five times, mm. I think. Do you think, I mean, do you think when you're actually making a record, do you think, well, this is quite an ambitious record we're making? No, th and that's the other thing, is there's no sort of, like, willful obscurity as yeah. well. I mean, we've got, we're being asked this quite a lot. It's like, OK, so Paranoid Android, what you're doing here, obviously, is you're trying to blah, 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 it's two fingers at everybody, you're trying to stay off all this stuff that might happen. It's like, well, no, I mean, if we wanted to do that, we could have done a much better job, you know. So caught in the middle somewhere, really, I think. We'll talk about a bit more about writing the songs and everything in a, in a second, but just um, tell us about that track, Paranoid Android, because it's the first single, uh, and not so much, in a way, not so much as a single, <laughs> as more of a taster, you know, for what's coming, isn't it? It's like, I was thinking, looking at, uh, I was thinking about the track, and it's almost like when you go out and buy, um, uh, you get a book of uh, different wallpapers, and you flip through it, you know, trying to find out which one you're going to have. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> that's what Radiohead it's like. Match. That's, what it's, yeah, that's, what, that's what it's like. Oh, wallpaper. Well, oh, it could be anything. could be paint. Yeah, no, or carpet. I think. Or carpet. I, I remember the carpet ones. They were really good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was um, fun to do. It was, uh, um, it was a Radiohead having a laugh, actually. I know that doesn't sound convincing sounds as hollow as anything but it's true i mean it was it was it was it was done it was recorded in four different stages at four different times um and then we put it together at the end so um it, it was just something we'd never done before but it I, I don't know i just remember um ed walking in at the last for the last section and going i've got this great vocal part and going la 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 and everyone's sitting there going oh god <laughs> he's lost it <laughs> Shit, he's lost it but um cabin fever yeah yeah right exactly 
Actually, the whole song is sort of cabin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, that song we actually we actually gigged that song last summer. Yes. And this is a condensed version of it. We, we used to do that. It was a nine-minute epic with Johnny doing this great big sort of Emerson, mad Lake Hammond <laughs> ELP solo at the end. And it was this, this last section. It didn't go back into the den. <clears throat> the fourth section was just this play out, and it was kind of like started off very mantra-esque. And it was, um, it was very dodgy. In indeed. our dreams, was it yeah, mantra-esque? Exactly. <laughs> It was awful. Anyway, this is all awful, actually. <laughs> <laughs> did you? I mean, did, did, did you find that a lot of the songs were evolving in the studio? You know. Uh, yeah. D d there's always this thing where you you have a song a certain way live, and then you go in and you play it in front of a, a merciless tape machine, and it tends to throw it back at you rather flatly. So you always have to mutate things to make um, to give you the excitement back. I mean, that certainly was the case with climbing up the walls, where um, that was pretty much the first thing we did. Uh, and I think we started at about one in the morning and it was um, we just had to change everything all the sounds and everything and uh, but essentially it was exactly how we played it live but we, we it needed to be much darker and much nastier and we were playing it live yeah it was all it was pretty much all live and yeah okay well let's play that track from the new Radiohead album which is called OK Computer this is Climbing Up The Walls it's a track called Climbing Up the Walls, which comes from the new Radiohead album, OK Computer, and talking to Radiohead today. And this uh, has come up before, but Climbing Up the Walls, a, a phrase, and I don't mean this unkindly, but a perfect Tom York phrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, because it's not about me, so that's good. Who, what is it? Who is it about? Um, well, it's, it was just a series of... It was sort of um, inspired by those series of killings, um, and murders or whatever. L last summer there seemed to be a series of really nasty brutal killings of children for no reason by local mysterious local figures you know uh, just anybody could be anybody did you did you find you had a lot to write about when you came to make this album yeah i, was, I think i naturally have a uh, this um a natural downtime after finishing a record but it really didn't last very long because um i think uh as soon as we go out on tour things start moving again and there's a momentum which is a momentum that makes me want to write things. Yeah. Um, when I'm home, it's sort of downtime, you know, it's quite still. Um, n you know, it was, it was, I think that, that for a while it was like, OK, I wasn't going to write about myself, basically. I just didn't want to write about myself. I kept telling people, oh, it's going to be uh, this and this, it's going to be a funny album, it's going to be political, it's going to be, well, whatever I could think of to try and um, give myself an agenda in which to work with, you know. So I had something to bounce off. Mm. And it, it also, I think, that the Benz, sort of a lot of things, personally, a lot of things sorted out. Um, and at the beginning, that's like, oh, God, you know, uh, I'm not uh, tortured, oh, dear, what am I going to do? You know, I'm going to have to look, go and look for something. But it was like, it wasn't like that at all. It was actually just um, a real opening up thing. Um, and basically just being interested in external, outside events, you know, like picking up a, an article in a newspaper and that being the most inspiring thing you've seen in six months, you know, things like that, um, which is amazing for me. I'd never really had that for a while, for quite a while. So I think a lot of it was opening up, really, this time round. Did you set yourself some sort of structure within which to work? Uh, our whole thing was that we wanted to buy a whole studio that you could put into boxes and wheel anywhere, sort of like the Stones Mobile, you know, in the 70s. And um, uh, so we did that, and we wanted to use Nigel... Godrich, who was one of the engineers on the Benz, we didn't want to use John Lucky because we sort of wanted it all to like start from the same point. And also, uh, we had absolutely sort of no deadline or time limit, so it was it was wild actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we would, we said to everyone, okay, uh, we want uh, we want to buy our own studio, and they're going, oh, okay, uh, we don't want a producer, okay, and we want no time limit, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and. Um, so it was it was odd because obviously when when those things were agreed it was like uh, complete freedom. So the only structure was was the panic inherent in yeah. complete freedom. Mm. Okay, we'll play another track from it. I keep saying okay, and of course okay is one of the most yeah, known words in, in the world. The world. Is this yeah. right? That's right. And computers for the other one, and that's why it's called Okay Computer, the new <laughs> album from uh, Radiohead. Oh dear. And this is called Karma Police. It's taken from the album OK Computer by Radiohead, who we're talking to today. That's called Karma Police. And that's one of the tracks that feels almost like a bit of a bridge between the bands and the new album. Oh, really? I think. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I think there's a few of those. I mean, 
And then when we were recording the bands, one of um, we did a demo, Tom did a demo by himself of one of the songs on like a computer called um, Subterranean Hemsicalian. So there, there are there are links between the two albums. It's not like we've ripped up everything we've done already and tried to change everything. Mm. There were certain things that fitted together. I mean, we had we we had a lot of material, but then then most of it was thrown away because most of it was rubbish. Um, and, there, and there was just a lot of um, there were certain things that fitted together and made sense that we wanted to pursue. Um, independent of where they sort of came from or what period of time it's, it's sort of we're not really a band that can just wipe away something and start again fresh because I think we've learned that um, you may hate a song for a long for like four months and then terminally regret not having done it justice mm. like two years later mm. so the Karma Police was um, I don't know it was uh, if I think about it now and I think if I'd actually sort of sat down and said you know we're going to write a song like that I mean it's it's sort of shamelessly um, pop and shamelessly sort of sick at the same time and sort of quite funny so uh, I, you know I wouldn't I don't know quite how we arrived at it where did you get the title was it the, uh, title just... uh, the title was um, <laughs> the title was uh, I, 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 I can't quite remember but I remember uh, it was um, we were driving through the night and uh, Johnny was feeding Ed lots of lines into his ears and Ed, Ed was sort of half asleep and quite susceptible, shall we say, <laughs> to whatever John was saying. And uh, Johnny was um, just really winding him up. And I think it was either you or me. It suddenly, was me, I was yeah, just... Yeah. Woke up... Oh, you woke up, yeah. I woke up half an hour later and had this phrase going around in my head, Tom, the police are going to get me, man. And it was like, <laughs> yeah, right. And it was a joke from then onwards, you know. It was always a joke. But It's a great idea. Yeah. To have karma police, like fashion police. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not supposed to be at all serious. Mm. One of the things about not working with a producer, do you, do you worry sometimes you, that you let yourself get away with things? Get uh, away, or are you very I hard think, on yourself? <clears throat> I think we were overcompensating, shall we say, <clears throat> a lot of the time. Right? Yeah. We'd, we'd record two or three versions of the same song and then find ourselves going back to the very first version because, you know, we just... We didn't... Um, the good thing is we didn't tinker endlessly with one recording. Um, as we might have been prone to do, but instead we'd record another version and another version in a completely different way, a different style. So that wasn't too unhealthy, I don't think. Mm. There's a song on, on the record called No Surprises, and it was the first thing that we recorded for OK Computer, and we recorded it in our rehearsal room, like, next to this field, next to this power station, and, like, it was in June, May yeah. or June? June. When Euro 96 was on. OK, and then we, we packed up and we reconvened for the rest of the album's recording in October, and we thought, oh, we better record it, you know, do another version. And I think we used up about four or five reels of tape doing different versions <laughs> of those up, used up at least ten. Yeah. Yeah. Ten, yeah, reels, ten of reels of tape, of tape right? Twenty minutes. On and guess show. what happens? We, like, go back and listen to the first thing we recorded for the album, first take, a song <laughs> called No Surprises, <laughs> and it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of plonkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good word. <laughs> Still, yeah. a waste, a complete waste of time. You're yeah, just absolutely. wasting your life there, trying it's... to improve on things. Wait, wait, how do you know when to stop? Uh, it's, Nigel used to say this. Nigel, the um, producer with, with us, he used to say, uh, "It doesn't matter how we get there, as long as we get there." And that was that was really just that was the whole album to me. It was like. <laughs> It was that. It was that phrase. It doesn't matter how we get there, as long as we get there. You know, it just summed up everything. You know, even all the the, the, the ideas in the album itself. It was like you know, amazing how long we would spend on on something that that had literally been like first take or something like that. But it was just. That's I mean, what how we long? Had to go how long did it actually take you in terms of time? Well, when terms, did you start and when did you actually finish? In terms of like, yeah, I mean, in terms of not relative to the amount of time actually spent in the studio getting fat. It was it was only about it was a year from beginning um, from the first time the red lights went on to the last time the red lights went on, and um, but I think we were only physically in the studio for about two and a half three months at the most, um, so a lot of thinking going on I suppose, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of rehearsing yeah a lot of time and effort spent getting to the point where we weren't worried about it, yeah. if that makes any sense I mean I'm not sure if yeah. that happened but you know. 
That was the whole thing about well. not having a deadline. Here is one of the tracks then, which we just mentioned from the OK Computer album by Radiohead. This is No Surprises. It's No Surprises, and it's taken from the new Radiohead album, which is called OK Computer. And we're talking to Radiohead. Do you, do you have to have the right atmosphere as a band to, to work? I mean, it's, um, I was reading somewhere about doing a bit of recording in a library and things. And all. yeah, um, I mean. Because it doesn't feel like a recording studio. No, because recording no. studios are terrible places to be. It's very yeah. hard making a record, which is supposed to be. It's you like know, being in a science lab. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, Nigel, the producer, the producer, who said that you know what we what he would like to do ideally with us is like every two weeks change the place because he says, oh, we maybe we don't realise that, but he says he's watched us and he said we respond to like different environments and we get bored very very easy we get kind of like shifty you know that library was enough after like four weeks and mm. we went in for another four weeks and it wasn't that productive so Nigel thinks we should like bunny hop to different places and put it on the truck, <laughs> put, put it on the truck and tour the world <laughs> yeah. oh dear would it sound different though That's it does it really really yeah. does I mean um, every every song on this record really really sounds like the environment that it was yeah. recorded in I mean really frighteningly so I mean, um, Kalma Police, Climbing Up the Walls, Exit Music, they all sound like the first week that we were in this house. Um, you know, I suppose it's for us, obviously, but I think the people, that friends of ours that came and stayed with us and stuff and came away said the same thing, that it was... Uh, that it was almost eerie, the fact, the level of atmosphere that was left on tape, you know. Yeah. Um, and it really just became part of what was happening and the overall feeling of the album. So you, you did songs in different batches as you sort of went along in different places? Yeah. Right. And you were doing some dates as well, and you mentioned going to America, because the, the last record helped begin to, you know, spread the Radiohead uh, name around a bit, didn't it? Yeah, well, the we, world. we had problems after the first album with Pablo Honey, because like, obviously Creep was a, was a big single there, and it, like, it meant that we weren't the band, people knew us because of the name, we were a pop, we were essentially a pop act, which we hadn't been anywhere bad else. Hair, yeah. <coughs> And um, so when we went back to America for the Benz, it was like, right, we're having to start again because a lot of these people, unless we're going to play Creep ten times in the set, people aren't going to come and see us. So we just we started right back at the clubs and did exactly what we did in this, you know, in the UK and we've done in Europe in like '92 and just toured, played smaller places. And we did like five tours of America and gradually, you know, the following got bigger and bigger. And um, but it's just harder because America's bigger, so you have to do it. You know, you're out for six weeks as opposed to. Mm you know, three in this country. Right? Was, that, was that a real trial, having to do that? No, it was or, great. It was brilliant. It was because brilliant. The amazing thing about going back out on the bends was it was just like wiping the whole thing yeah. out mm. and starting from scratch. It was really ace. Mm. It was hard work, but it just felt ace to do it. Yeah, because the thing is, when you, when you do get like a pop hit in America, um, there is a certain type of person who comes along to the show and I'm not, it's terrible generalization but it's true you know when we used to play creep on that first tour i remember we first gig ever in america boston we played creep fourth and set 25 percent of the people walked out so <laughs> and we, they got their fill and we stopped them and asked them you know why are you leaving and they yeah. said well we do this at all, all the gigs yeah. so we saw nirvana last week and we just go after smells like teen spirit yeah because that's the one that was on mtv and that's the one we know but we don't go to gigs normally very weird kind of percentage of the audience. And we had where, no where, was, where was Creep in the set on the second night? Was it near the end? <laughs> <laughs> you were a little bit more pressed one in. <laughs> no, I think we yeah, we played it. Yeah. It's like, you know, piss off home. With a little pause for them to get their coats and yeah. then play for <laughs> the remaining 75%. You know. And then play it again at the end of the set just to spite them. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> Yeah. And is it is it refreshing somehow? You get to a certain level, obviously, uh, in the, in Britain, of playing to certain size gigs, so you can go back a level almost. Yeah, and, you know, be able to play what if effectively would be the you know a low key gig over here. Yeah, they're gr they're great. You know, they're kind of the size of you know town of the Forum or whatever. What about um, so you did a, you've done America and did you go around Europe as well? Um, not not when we're doing um, OK Computer. Uh, we sorry, did some festivals. We, oh, did we? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, massive yeah. Attack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, there was the... My favourite night was, yeah, that was the Massive Attack and Bjork on the same stage and us in between the two of them. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a strange sandwich. <laughs> no, it was great. Yeah. And it was the small stage as well. You had the Chili Peppers and um, Rage Against the Machine. It was a metal stage. Uh, but well, all the cool yeah. people were. 
w one of our crew's highlights was Rage Against the Machine coming to watch us play mm. from the side of the stage, and he had to tell them all to move out of his way so he could <laughs> do his job. And they were very, very polite and meek, and it was... It was None of that, I won't do what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 that was cheap. <laughs> Sorry. It was but they were lovely chaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's Radiohead and another track from the album OK Computer now. We'll play Exit Music. Exit Music from the new Radiohead album OK Computer. Something almost choral about some of the sounds in that, do you know what I mean? Choral? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we got a new toy. I kind of... Uh, I'm beginning to regret admitting this, but I've been trawling through um, prog rock records, which are all terrible and awful. <laughs> but the only thing I've come away with is, is this instrument called a mellotron which is, is like having sort of 60 tape machines inside a piano, if you can imagine that, and every key just starts a tape. So you just, you can they get recordings of choirs and strings. And, and uh, the day that we got it, the day that it arrived, um, we, we recorded exit music and put it straight onto that song and it just uh, just blew our minds. It was, it, was, it was choral, yeah. That's on um, the Romeo and Juliet film yeah, soundtrack. Was, How did was, that come about? Well, um, it was uh, Baz Luhrmann, the director, sent, it, uh, sent us a tape of the beginning and the end of it and a bit in the middle, and uh, it was weird. He just said, do you want to do the, the exit music for it, you know? And uh, it just sort of, um, the tape was really, the tape that he sent was really exciting. I really liked the idea of um, basically, you know, Shakespeare just done sort of trash Hollywood style, but not, you know? I mean, it's sort of trashy, but it isn't, apparently. I haven't mm. seen it all. He's seen it. I have seen it. Yeah. But, uh it, it just sort of rang home in my head somehow. I'm not quite sure how. And uh, I wrote it over sort of three weeks. So we were in America, and sounds good in the cinema. Does it? Except for the accompaniment of cinema seats banging upright all around. <laughs> people leaving. <laughs> people leaving. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's really good. Do you have like images of what the video is going to be to tracks almost when you're writing them? Can you, you know, there is something quite filmic about a lot of I the think, Radiohead material. I think, um, especially on OK Computer, that a lot of it was... Um, I mean, I've, I've sort of got myself into a habit of explaining the way that there was writing generally as, as some nut over the Polaroid camera just endlessly shooting everything that was... If you're in a fast-moving train and you're just there with a Polaroid camera um, and you're sort of taking photos and everything's not quite in focus because you're moving too fast. Um, but that was really... It felt like the way that... I was writing the words also by the same token the images were like that it was all sort of really rapid sh trashy s snapshots mm. so yes I suppose it was quite image intensive Captain <laughs> <laughs> Are you worried that people would take this album in the wrong way and just you know basically think that you're trying too hard to just be obtuse almost well, yeah, yeah, but as I said before, you know, there's, there's such, you could just make it so much more obtuse than it is mm. if that was the case. Uh, I think, um, I think it was basically we had a sound in our heads, and and we had to get it out, and it was sort of obtuse, but not really. It was a particular, particular things that we had to um, create, and a lot of, not really obtuse, but like, um, I mean, like, like the Benz, for example, was essentially a lot of very neat songs that were sort of entities in their own right and luckily went together. Mm. Whereas this was, was much more of a sort of sprawling bits here and there because um, because that's what we needed to do. <laughs> I know it sounds that wet, but it's, it's like, you know, and if people think we're being obtuse and stuff, um, I suppose it's possible. If, it's, if, it, if that was true, I suppose it's a form of self-defence against, mm. you know... We were playing with the idea of, of, of uh, what people would expect, but not in a negative way. I mean, you could, you could, it could have been much worse. But I think there's a lot of humour on this record, really. It's quite black, but it's quite a funny record for me. A lot of it makes me smile, mm -hmm. which, um, which can't be really the case of previous records that we've done. And where's, where is this new black humour from? Ah... Uh, mm. Is it just a change of view on the world somehow? Uh, yeah, I suppose an opening up, as I said before, is sort of. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, humour is a good form of self-defence, isn't it? Really? So more open, and uh, is there happier 
Tom York, this is from the album OK Computer, this is Fitter Happier. Now that, I think, one of the strangest tracks off the new album, which is OK Computer from Radiohead. And it's this, you obviously, you used a computer in some way to get the, the vocal yeah, effects so on just that. a very, very simple program. I mean, you can get on any computer nowadays. But for me, the, 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 the best thing about that track isn't actually the voice, it's the, the piano mm. thing I really like. Uh, it's like a segue, you know, but it's... Um, the, p the piano just descends and the, there's this uh, string thing descending underneath. And I think when you f hear it first time, you just hear the voice. But mm. it, essentially, the, the voice is just underpinning the, the, the music, you know. Um, but the, the beauty of the voice was just the fact that it had, like, no emotional uh, force at all. It was just, it's very neutral. It's got no uh, inflection, really, to it. And it mispronounces things as well. And so it sort of chewed up this thing that meant a lot to me and spat it out in this completely neutral way, mm. which made it mean even more, you know. Mm. I thought at first it, was, uh, it reminded me of the opening to Train Spotting. Yeah, a lot of people said that, mm. but it's like... Mm. I think it's just because it's a list of yeah, phrases. I, I just, I mean, all the way through from when we finished the Benz onwards, I've just been endlessly writing lists. I have just lists. <laughs> Constantly. I mean, it seemed like the only way to um, express things, really. When you can't make a cohesive line of thought, mm. the best thing to do is express it in lists. So uh, if there's a similarity, I think it's probably because of that same inability to express things, really, which just forces you to write list it, because you can't say anything else. You know, mm. you can't put it in one line, mm. you can't give it a narrative. I mean, that is one of the tracks which, uh, as you mentioned while it was playing, just, uh, well, that'll get them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what will what will people think, you know? Is that what you're thinking when you put it on? Well, we'll put this here not, and... Uh, uh, not really, I mean, I don't know, someone else wants that. I think you have to be very careful, you know, we, we, with um, Fitter Happier. It was very important that it went on the album. We were toying with putting it as the first song. And then we thought, no, it works better. It was like, I think it's a six, isn't it, or seven or something. And it like it's it's a bit like, you know, now on CDs as well, you don't have that whole thing of side one and side two, and it's really important. And, and we thought it like broke it up really well. And the fact that it was lyrically, it kind of, on its own, it's kind of quite perverse and obtuse. But within the context of the album, um, without trying to sound pretentious, it kind of works. It does. It really, really works. And it's very important as a kind of, you know, if you're making an album as a, a theme all over, mm. it, if you like. It's sort of like all the things I couldn't say elsewhere on the record, but needed to be on there. That's how it felt. You've got quite um, proud of this record as to where it takes you on, though. This uh, the definitely, album. Well, mm. yeah. I mean, because but uh, as I say, it's sort of like the dust is still settling, mm. you know. So it's like proud of it, but it's all just complete chaos, you know. Mm. Just doing all the electioneering at the moment. <laughs> I think one of the important things is like we never wanted to be kind of like pigeonholed as a band, and I think what this album does mean is that we can go off in different mm. directions, and you know, and people won't be amazed. They won't. You know, they'll think that because the ground is so, you know, it's there for the taking. Mm. So this this is the album that opens up all sorts of opportunities and well, possibilities. I don't, I, I don't know, I think that, you know, there was this opinion that we were all set up to do the big third album crossover, you mm -hmm. know, to people who've never heard of us, but it's, it sort of feels like we've only done an album that people who like the Benz will, will like in a way. I can't imagine, well maybe, who knows, but that's all we aim to do really, I think. And next time? Um, oh, that'll be the, the handy crossover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Just as long as we know it's coming. <laughs> right, yeah, thank you very much for talking to us. Thanks, thanks. And from the album OK Computer, this is Lucky.